This is part seven of our negotiation book. This section is called Asking Questions, and we're going to look at the vocabulary now. So let's go ahead and jump into the vocab. Agreement. Of course, agreement is when all sides of the negotiation, usually two sides, but it could be more than two sides, agree on terms. They they accept each other's offers and counter offers. So it's a positive end. If a negotiation does not come to an agreement in the end, then it falls apart and there's no agreement. There's not really an opposite to agreement. There's just no agreement. The opposite is not disagreement. You just have no agreement. So agreement means the negotiation really does come to an end. Now, inside your negotiation, you can use this when you're talking with your counterparts by asking them or telling them, I really want us to come to an agreement. I want us to have an agreement before Wednesday. I hope we can come to an agreement. It's very positive and sounds very good. Calm. You can ask the other side to stay calm, not show too much emotion, not get too excited. And this is a way to help the other side um, relate to you a little bit when you ask them to stay calm. Now, if they're getting very excited or their demands are too extreme, you can say, can you please stay calm? And this will give them a signal that you maybe are a little bit frustrated with their attitude. Usually you would not use this unless the other side was getting really excited or emotional. Conditional. Conditional means you're going, you're going to do something, but it depends on something else. So usually when you go to school, you can graduate, but only conditional on did you pass all your classes. So you need to pass your classes before you can graduate. It's conditional on that requirement. So in negotiation, we can often use this idea of conditional. I can give you a lower price conditional on your purchasing more units. So I'll give you something if you give me something. It's a great word to use inside your negotiation. Confrontational is exactly what we were talking about. We want somebody to stay calm if they're being very confrontational. Usually confrontational has some kind of anger or a little bit extreme or too emotional. So confrontational is something we want to avoid in a negotiation. Or if the other side is being very confrontational, we may want to consider withdrawing from the negotiation unless we have a different kind of tactic to fight back against that. So you can, you can come right out and say this to the other side. You can say, you are being very confrontational, or you are being too confrontational. That's okay to say. And it will make the other side, uh, I should say it's a little bit negative. It has a negative connotation. And if the other side doesn't heed your warning, then you can threaten them. We're going to withdraw from this uh, negotiation. Counter offer. Counter offer is the offer that goes against the other offer. So I give you an offer, but you want to change it. So you give me another offer, that's called the counter offer. The reason for a counter offer is, very, is to help you make it very clear what it is you want. So I offer you a $10 price. You cannot just say, nope, that's no good, because I don't know what you want. So you give me a counter offer. You say, my counter offer is 1050. Now I know what you're thinking of and what you want. So counter offer. So in your negotiation, you will say, Here's the counter offer. Generous, meaning that you give something uh, positive and a lot. You're giving a lot of something that the other side wants. You're being very generous. Uh, you can tell the other side that they're being generous, and that's a very positive compliment. Uh, it would be very, I think it's a very unusual in, in negotiation that you would tell the other side they're being very generous because, of course, you want to maximize. So even if they give you a lot of what you want, normally you would still say something like, oh, that's not enough because you want to get more. But anyway, you could if you want to, and it depends on the type of negotiation you're in. Inquire means to ask a question. So you can go ahead and say something like, I would like to inquire into your inventory amount. Do you have enough supply for us to buy this much? I would like to inquire into this. Leading. 
Now leading is related to questions. So in this case, leading, of course, means in front of, like when you walk your dog, usually your dog is leading you. Your dog is walking in front of you, that's the dog is leading you. In questions, a leading question is a question that's not really a question, but I already kind of have the answer in the question. So, for example, I can say something like, you want to have a lower price, don't you? You see, I already said the answer inside the question. It's a leading question. Uh, your quality can be better, can it? So it's a leading question. Now you can use this in your negotiation by just telling the other side. That's a leading question. You just come out and tell them. So when they say that to you, you say, that's a leading question. Uh, I'm not going to answer that. You already, you already answered the question, you know. Objection. Objection means to disagree or have a different perspective from your counterpart, and you can have an objection. Of course, the verb is object. So I have many objections. Another way you can use this, you can just ask your counterpart, what are your objections? You say you don't like this offer, or you say you don't like this counteroffer. Please tell me your objections. Open-ended, in this case about questions, open-ended means it has, no very, it has no clear parameters. It has no clear uh, uh, question in it. It's open-ended. It's not just a yes or no answer. So an open-ended question or an open-ended issue has no clear answer. It can be just a long explanation. So usually we use this, of course, related to questions. Open-ended question meaning you can say as much as you want and try to say uh, as wide-ranging as you want. Progress. So of course the goal is to make progress in our negotiation and we can use this in our negotiation as we work towards the goal. We get closer and closer. We make more and more progress. So you can tell the other side, your counterpart, I want to make a lot of progress today. Can, can we be sure to make progress today? We haven't been progressing all of this week. I need to make progress today. So that's a good word to use in your negotiation. Reasonable is another great word that you can use in the negotiation. And reasonable means that the, uh, that the other side or your side is not asking for too much. They're not being too extreme. Uh, it makes it easier to agree if both sides are reasonable. So in this case, you can come right out and tell the other side, your request on price is not reasonable. Your demand is not reasonable. And they could respond. They could say, our demand is very reasonable. So it's a great word to use in your negotiation. Reduction, of course, is when you ask for something to go lower and you're asking for a reduction. How much of a reduction can you give us? Requirement, meaning that the things that have to be done, kind of like prerequisite in a way, requirement. Uh, in your negotiation, you can use it very similar to prerequisite. This is a requirement. We require a guarantee of arrival time. We, we require a price of 1050 or lower. It's a requirement. Resolve. Now here resolve is kind of like uh, in another chapter we had the word tough. Right? Tough meaning hard, you don't give in easily. Resolve is, is kind of that way. You need to resolve a tough situation. How can you resolve it? How can you come to an end? How can you uh, find a solution? You need to resolve it. So it's finding an answer, getting an answer. And if the situation is very easy, I want 1050, you want 1049, it's not that big of a difference. We can probably resolve that easily. But usually we use this word resolve for situations that are more complex or more difficult, tough negotiation situations. How can we resolve it? So we can even talk about this in our negotiation. I have an idea that can help resolve this problem. I have a solution that I think will resolve this issue. Now revisit is a great one in negotiation and it's like the word I think we had in another chapter renegotiate. Renegotiate meaning to do again. Revisit is to do it again. Revisit. Visit the situation again. Talk about it again. 
So usually revisit is related to one small part of the negotiation. So your negotiation may have many parts, the product, the um, quantity, the shipping. So all of these are that whole package, that deal package. But we may agree on everything except one small thing and then later I can say I need to revisit that. Or maybe we agreed on everything and now we're just about to make the deal and I say wait a minute I think we need to revisit the shipping because we cannot accept this shipping the way it is. So revisit and usually it's a small part. Unit, uh, the per unit is one single unit and this is important not when you're, well I guess it is when you're speaking you need to remember this. It's very important that you get your units clear. One easy thing to do in negotiation is to get confused in your communication. What is the price per how many units? And it's very easy to overlook this and you could be negotiating with the other side and you're talking about 10 units and they're talking about 10 boxes and each box has 10 units inside each box. So if you're thinking different units and different sizes, the price is totally different. So you need to make sure you're clear on the unit, that is the smallest unit, or what unit are we using to negotiate. You can just come out and ask too. You can ask the other side, you say, are we talking about per box and is every box has 10 units? What is a unit? Is a unit a box or each individual product? And they will tell you. Unresolved. So as you get towards the end of the negotiation, you solve more and more problems, you agree on more and more, there may be one or two things left over and those are unresolved. And that's normal because you want the negotiation to keep moving and to keep it moving, you first solve the easy problems and save the hard problems for later. Unresolved are the problems that are not solved yet. Unsolved, unresolved. And you can use this in your negotiation when you're speaking. You'll just come right out and say, there is one unresolved problem and we need to talk about it now. And then up to you is a way to tell the other side that it's up to you the way you want to do it. So it's a way to give in and give something. It's a great little English phrase to say, oh, I give it to you, it's up to you. Oh, well this last little thing about uh, two dollars this way or that way it's up to you or the shipping is up to you so it's a great way to uh, have a positive um, relationship building up to you okay that is the vocabulary for part seven